This is gonna sound dramatic, but if you're in tech, if you're a programmer building apps or just interested, I really think if you don't understand this, then you're gonna get completely left behind in the coming years. Y Combinator is saying this is gonna be 10 times bigger than SaaS. It actually led to me switching to Windows for the first time ever and buying a new laptop. When you think of AI apps, you probably think of, okay, ChatGPT, OpenAI, but once or twice you might've heard of AI agents. And this article by Anthropic lays it out in a really solid way. You can think of agents as composable building blocks, similar to patterns in programming. And with these building blocks, you can either build workflows, which augment your code and replace functions and can do a set of actions. Or you have agents, which are a level higher. They orchestrate your workflows, your functions. So basically they choose what actions to take and then based on the result of that action, they choose what to do next. Now, these building blocks I spoke about, they're very similar to concepts you already know if you know anything about programming. You have prompt chaining, which is the same as doing multiple function calls with optional error handling. Evaluator optimizer, it's just a loop. Routing is like parallel, concurrent, async programming, which helps improve your performance by running multiple things at once, and orchestration and synthesis, basically what data engineers do. You take large data sets and you transform it into a more useful structured format. As we can see, there's a big catch with these types of workflows and systems. They often trade latency and cost for better task performance. So agents are expensive in time and money. They take a while to run because you're doing all these back-to-back -back tasks and you're doing tons of LLM calls, maybe recursively in a loop and feeding in large context because your agent needs to understand the past actions that it's already taken. But, and this is super interesting, is there is a way completely around this. And it's why I bought the new laptop. It allows you to run LLMs on your computer for free and a lot faster. Everyone is saying it, it's not AI that's gonna take your job, it's someone that knows AI better than you do. If that's true at all, what we're doing here, learning is absolutely key for securing your future career. In other words, you wanna thrive, you gotta learn this stuff as much as possible. Now, the most serious courses that I've come across when I was searching around trying to learn are Simply Learn's AI and machine learning courses. Give me just a minute, because if you wanna go deep, I think they're worth checking out. And just a heads up, this video is sponsored by Simply Learn. One of the best ones I came across was the Microsoft-backed AI engineer course, because it covers everything from generative AI to deep learning, prompt engineering, and more. There's over 25 projects and a capstone, so you'll walk away with a lot of hands-on experience. Then there's electives which really let you specialize, advanced generative AI, NLP, and even preparing for the Microsoft Azure certification exam. And in the end, you even get a certificate from Microsoft. And if you're curious about reviews, 4.5 on SwitchUp, 4.4 on Career Karma, you can check those out. They've also got financing options. So I would encourage you, if this sounds interesting at all, at least check out Simply Learn's website, evaluate some of the different courses. And this is a really structured way just to get fully immersed in AI. So if you're interested, check out the pinned comment or link in description. Thanks again to Simply Learn for the sponsor. Back to the video. All you need to do is go to olama.com and you can download a bunch of different ones for free. So running through this really quick, you just go to the models tab and you can see a full list here. It goes on and on. Now, most important part, when you're running it locally, your model size has to be less than your GPU VRAM. So this particular card, RTX 4070, it has eight gigabytes. So I have to check how big is the model, not in terms of uh, parameters, like this one has 70 billion, but in terms of the actual, let's say file or uh, trained model size. So I can go into, for example, Llama 3.3, it's gonna be too big, I already know, with the 70 and the 405 um, billion parameters. So what I do is I just go into tags and I can see like, yeah, they're 40, 49, 53, and so on. I already have a few installed and again, you can, install a new one just by running this command and it will immediately start running it. But I can uh, show you which ones I have installed. So Olama LS, and you'll see that I have Quen, I have Llama 3, I actually have a compressed version right now. And uh, just cause I was testing it and I have El Lava, which is image uh, analysis. Uh, so these Quen models, you'll notice they're actually, even the compressed ones are under eight, but actually when I run it, it is not fully using my GPU. So if I do, if I run Quen instruct Q2, let me just show you what I mean. 
So once you run that, you get a command prompt and you can kind of test the speed by typing in a command hello. And even for that really simple one, you'll see there was a bit of a delay. Now, if I go to a new window and I do Olama P's, I can see the reason is because actually when this model is running, the size expands to 7.5 gigabytes because it needs a little bit of extra space. And then on top of that, my GPU needs some extra space to run normal processes. So while it's able to fit 91% into the GPU, that's still gonna be a pretty big performance hit because it has to offload things to the CPU, which is just like exponentially slower. And it's what you'd have to do if you don't have a GPU locally. So let's just kill this one and we'll instead run the Llama 3.2. So I just copy that model name. Just running it again, because it didn't fully stop the previous one. And now when we type hello, boom, instant response. That's what we want. Now, if we check the uh, utilization, we can see it's 100% GPU. It expanded to 5.4, but that's okay. As long as you have this when you run a Llama piece. Companies like this, Origami Agents, it's in Y Combinator. In the first month, I think they're doing 100K recurring revenue already. And let's just take a look at this company and try to build a simple version. So they do business lead generation with custom prompting. And their whole pitch is something I've described in the past few videos. You have virtually unlimited unstructured data on the web that maybe doesn't exist in a database you have access to. And if you can extract and structure this in a useful way, this is a huge opportunity even if you're building a very niche agent for a very specific industry. So if we scroll down, we can see some of the queries people are able to run. Find WooCommerce store owners who sell products covered in uh, by US health insurance. Here's another one. You can visit the site if you wanna see them all. But let's take a look at this one specifically. So if we think in terms of agentic patterns. So for this one, if we think in terms of agentic patterns, how would we actually achieve this with various workflows? To make this a bit more concrete, we have the orchestrator at the top, which first chooses what steps we want to run. So first, find products, second, find stores, and then third, see if they're WooCommerce or not. And within each step, we'd have sub workflows. So we might have just have a search Google workflow, a scrape articles site to extract the information we need. So I've actually coded a simple version of an app that's very similar to what a B2B agent like Origami would do. But I've given you the choice here between running it locally for free or using the OpenAI API. But again, I'll emphasize that agents specifically, they can do a lot of LLM calls, consume a lot of tokens. So you can see my component files map to the architecture that we talked about. First, I have the orchestrator, which has a lot of different methods. And again, if you really wanna get into it, just check out the code. But at the highest level, first we're generating the tasks up front. First do this, then do this, then do this, and use sub workflows to accomplish them. Then another important method, we have a prompt to select the next workflow from the workflow definitions in these folders, which are basically the same as just programming functions. For our workflows, I could have gone super generic and just written a crawler with a custom prompt, but I wanted to make it a little bit more specific where I can, where I have one just for search Google, where I can ensure that the search results are getting crawled and extracted correctly. So I've also added a little bit of custom scraping code here. If we're doing B2B, having something that finds LinkedIn profiles is very useful. And I've specified here that we want to just pull the SERPs or Google search results for let's say name, company name. Let's say we do a prompt like, find me all the coding bootcamp owners in the USA and send me their name and their LinkedIn profile so I can message them. That would be an example use case there. And then of course we have our generic crawl site. So we have these search results for Google, then our orchestrator will decide which ones are worth visiting that might have the information we want. So I've run this a few times already and I'll show you the output. I put in find 10 Facebook software engineer names and their LinkedIn profiles. And we can see just from this prompt, the model completely ran and extracted exactly what we need. We have name, profile URL and position. So software engineer, software engineer. Yeah, pretty much all software engineers with direct links. Let me just show you another example of this. Let's say you want to find Shopify apps to market a specific product to them. All I have to do is say, find me 10 Shopify apps then find their founders slash owners and their, their names and LinkedIn URLs. Now, I don't want this video to get too long, but let's just see what it does first. So, so here our orchestrator has broken it up into two key tasks. First, find the Shopify apps and names from a Google search, then get founder names and LinkedIn URLs. So it's gonna complete the first one before the second one. Then it selected the search Google workflow and we can see the search query here. 
That'll run for a little bit and then we'll see that our step was complete with a summary. So it found the first Shopify app, which is named Clavio, and it found, and it's doing another search query for Clavio founders LinkedIn. And so far it found two results. Now it's doing the same for Oberlo, Privy, and it's just going down through the list of URLs that we found. So this is gonna to continue to run. Let me just show you the end output with that very simple prompt that we put in in the beginning. So here we can see a results summary and it also saved us a JSON file. Let's open that file. And first we can see it got all the app names and URLs, but, and we can also look at the summary down here. Unfortunately, it didn't 100% understand us because for certain apps, it found more than one person. So of course you could further refine the prompt that you're inputting to get a different result. But let's just take a look at one of these URLs to see if it's correct. And yeah, for this one, at least we got the co-founder at Sprocket. Let's just check another one, Tomer Tagren for Yachtpo. And yeah, so we got the CEO there. So, so of course it's still not perfect. I coded this agent in about one day, but you can probably start to see the power of composing things together, doing custom workflows and having a really solid orchestrator. That being said, if you like this video, please leave a comment so I can make more agent videos or AI videos. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.